Cyberpunk 2077 had a very rough start when it initially launched back in December 2020. The game was full of bugs, glitches, and wasn't a great experience on last-gen consoles either. The launch of the game was horrible where PlayStation decided to remove the game off their online store for the time being until it gets fixed. Fast forward to September 2023, CD Projekt Red dropped one of their final updates and their DLC expansion for Cyberpunk 2077. And a lot of people aren't lying when they say this update changes everything for this game. Before we start talking about the new Cyberpunk, this is a spoiler free critique and there may be minor spoilers but I'll make sure to include out of context clips and show random gameplay that is not related to big story moments. This means a lot of gameplay shown in this video may not correlate to this commentary. You would have to hear me out on certain things when I discuss this game. With that being said, my playthrough is based off performance mode on the PS5 as I play a new save as Street Kid V on normal difficulty. Remember to drop a like and subscribe if you haven't yet. Any support to the channel and video is much appreciated. Also, feel free to comment how you feel about the DLC expansion and its updates so far. Please keep it spoiler free in the comment section as well. I would love to hear other people's opinions of it, especially if they were anticipating this update in DLC. Now, let's get on to this critique. Wake the f up, samurai. We have a city to burn. We'll start by talking about update 2.0. There are plenty of changes heading into this update. I'm not sure if I will be able to mention every little detail, but the big changes are reworked perk systems, which every skill tree you know from base game, if you have played Cyberpunk before, it is completely different and provides meaningful approaches when creating builds. I found myself being more cautious on deciding what skill to apply to my character because initially I didn't care as much on picking a certain skill since you were able to be overpowered anyway. And the game being easy on any difficulty didn't give me much incentive to be as careful when choosing skills. With the skill tree giving much more thought to the player, I always found myself mentally calculating what skills to progress as I level up. There are a lot of great skills in each tree, and the way it's spread out, there's always some reason to look forward to even if you progress just one skill tree. They also changed up your cyberware a lot. They are primarily the main focus of your builds and skills while adding additional abilities depending what cyberware you have. For those who haven't played the game, cyberware is basically gear in a RPG game, which are the crucial stat boost or to have additional abilities in this type of genre. On launch with its base game, the stats were spread out everywhere. It was very unorganized with how it was handled, and clothing had certain stat stem, which was sort of a problem since there was no way of getting additional stats anywhere else. Your character would look ridiculously funny throughout the game since each clothing piece would be random with its abilities, and it would be the only way to have a functional build. Now everything is relied on with the skill trees and cyberware while clothing pieces are just cosmetics. Some of them actually do give certain boost to your stats but it isn't as drastic since it would be like a 1 to 5 percent stat boost change so they weren't as essential to put on at all and you could work on your character's fashion at piece another nice addition to the reworked perk system is that the game is much more balanced than how it originally was you still can be overpowered but it takes much more sacrifice for your build in order to be on that level with the balance changes there is a bit of change in the difficulties i was only playing in normal mode but i found myself being bodied during act one of the game you definitely have to be more careful when approaching fights, especially when your build is not meant to tank so much damage or if your build doesn't rely on heavy offense. Which goes back to what I just mentioned, how your builds and skill trees really matter now, and to put everything up nicely, the team even reworked the overall AI in, in the entire game, so enemies are much more responsive to your actions during combat. I still personally don't think it's the greatest, but it's better than how it was before when they wouldn't really do much. There are other great life quality changes on this update with its technical side, which I'm not gonna be in into detail, but the performance in Cyberpunk on consoles better than ever before. And I'm not sure if this was part of the 2.0 update. The visuals look incredible compared to how it looked before from what I remembered, and surprisingly, the performance of the game ran well in 60 FPS. The only times I've dipped in frame rate when there were so many effects or chaotic things happening on screen. It did crash a few times with the game through the 70 hours I had with my first playthrough, along with encountering some bugs and glitches, but they weren't game breaking. The crashes were random, but it seemed that the game 
crashed every time it autosaved. Although I never had a problem with the autosaves, it does get kind of annoying to see your gameplay experience freeze for a second since it was autosaving and there is no option on console to, to turn it off at all which I found strange. With the bugs or glitches, they weren't as serious and my general advice for those who encounter weird bugs or glitches in important parts of the game is to simply reload your save or reopen the game. The issues will end up being gone. The problem I had throughout my playthrough is that one of my quests bugged out when I was playing it and the story wouldn't progress at all. The characters and scenario within that quest weren't interacting to what it was supposed to do, so I just simply reloaded one of my autosaves and the game was working properly again. Another issue within combat is that sometimes enemies are able to shoot through ceilings or walls. Not sure if their weapons are actually able to do that since you could have builds like that in this game, but it happened frequently where I was confused on locating certain enemies since they were hiding and shooting at random spots in the area. A small bug as well on console was that I couldn't call over my car sometimes during the 2.0 update and I would have to reload my save just for that mechanic to work. This was the bug that was the most irritating thing to deal with since driving my own cars and requesting them to be where I'm at was one of the main things you do in this game. Transportation is a necessity here, but in the next update, the 2.01 update, that problem just vanished, so I assume they fixed it. I know this sounds concerning to some people, but it wasn't all that serious to begin with, just like I said, you could either just deal with it or reload your save and the issues will be gone. I thought this was important to bring up, especially for those who haven't bought the game or the DLC expansion yet. There also may be other bugs you may deal with in your playthrough that I have not experienced, but from what I read and seen from others is that the majority of the time the game works fine. Now let's talk about if any story changes for this 2.0 update. Fortunately, there aren't big changes where you would be able to spot the difference. There may be since Phantom Liberty's story overlaps with the current base game story, but I assume you would need to buy the DLC to see these slight changes. For now, let's just focus on talking about the base game story in 2.0. The story is pretty much the same with the decision making and I was a bit bummed when experiencing the base game again. There are moments when your decisions do matter, but there are plenty of times where it really doesn't or it seems very linear, having no big consequences in your playthrough. I was hoping back then when they started to release these future updates that the stories within these questlines could have more depth to them. I personally felt it was rushed and missed significant things that they could have capitalized on and have a good conclusion. Initially when doing these certain questlines, I felt very neutral on them when I had completed it and I always felt like there should be a bit more. As I started a whole new character and went through the entire game once more, I still kind of have that feeling of putting it in more story in certain points of the game, especially when you discover the area called Pacifica. The way the promotions described it before launch and even within its story once you participate in that questline, there was much anticipation to it and it seems like it would have been the biggest turning point of the game to only find out there's only few big quests to go through and you would never see or interact with those characters and the whole area again unless there are unrelated side missions to do over there. Despite certain directions where the story went through, I believe there are still many things to look forward to and you may be still surprised by other stories in the game. Even performances from actors along with Keanu Reeves who play as Johnny Silveran would shock you. I've seen others impressions of those who haven't played Cyberpunk and were surprised how Keanu Reeves wasn't just some sort of cameo. He's a recurring character or you could even consider him a main character for the whole game. That was my initial impression on launch is how much he is really part of your playthrough and typically games don't have big actors or big celebrities that tend to do all these crazy shenanigans that a game studio offers them to do. Keanu Reeves was really with you in the world of cyberpunk, and I really praise not just Keanu but the team overall for making it work somehow for this big ambitious game. Despite the flaws on what I've discussed about, 2.0 really polished what we needed in Cyberpunk on launch back in 2020. I could definitely say that the game is ready to play and you should go out and try it. Especially if you have bought the game in the past, I believe it is worth trying the game once more at its best version yet. What's cool about 2.0? that it's a free update and you don't need to purchase Phantom Liberty to experience what I've just talked about. So if you feel iffy on purchasing Phantom Liberty, you could just try out the 2.0 update to give yourself a feel of the game. Obviously, if you already bought Cyberpunk. And if you want more of it, go ahead and purchase Phantom Liberty because there's much more to see in that expansion for sure, which is the next topic of this video.
The DLC expansion Phantom Liberty is another great touch to the game. It expands on not just the story for Cyberpunk, but also the map. Dogtown, which is the extension of Pacifica, is a character itself just like Night City. It has its own stories and lore of why it is the place it is today. It is the complete opposite of what Night City looks like, but it still has its own charm. When you start to roam around and read certain documents, hear out certain NPCs, and progress through certain quest lines, you'll understand the things what I just described, and the place may grow onto you if your initial impressions weren't as great. What I truly love from this expansion is nearly everything it provides, to world building, to the side gigs, performances from the actors, and of course the main storyline in Phantom Liberty. The best comparison I could give for this DLC expansion is very similar to how The Witcher 3 has done with its game and its DLCs. For those who are not familiar with The Witcher franchise, it's another RPG series based off a book which CD Projekt Red managed to produce since 2007, which is why my excitement for Cyberpunk 2077 was at an all-time high since I always wanted CDPR to create another IP rather than just sticking to The Witcher. My first initial impressions when progressing some hours into the beginning of Phantom Liberty, I was personally familiar with how it was structured because I have played all the Witcher games. So the little details are sort of present here in Phantom Liberty, but the main core element of what made me fall in love with the Witcher titles is decision making and their stories, and how many consequences you face during your playthrough. When involving yourself in decision making in CDPR's storytelling, it's not just simple dialogue you hear or read from the character, they also create different scenarios based on what you have done, which creates a much personalized playthrough. Everyone experiences something different in these type of games, and this goes back to Phantom Liberty. If you are familiar with how CDPR creates their previous games with The Witcher, quality is there for this DLC. I found myself always in thought-provoking quests where they were side gigs or main quest lines. They always make yourself overthink or question your morality with the scenarios given to you. Comparing Phantom Liberty's story with base game Cyberpunk including the side quest, it really shows the difference in quality for its add-on content. As I mentioned before, I was a bit bummed out that Cyberpunk didn't necessarily have the level of decision making and variety of scenarios given to the player like the Witcher games. And although I still believe that the entire game overall, even with Phantom Liberty isn't as on par with The Witcher 3, it is still such a great game to experience nonetheless. Phantom Liberty delivers with much more content for your first playthrough experience. The thing I personally had a problem with is that since the DLC expansion takes place during the middle of your base game story, there is a point in the game once you enter Phantom Liberty's expansion where you could catch go in and out of Dogtown, but the thing is with how heavy some things are in the DLC and casually going out of Dogtown to do another questline or side gig for the base game, I felt the immersion was out of place. Which initially is why I grinded out a lot of the quests in base game to the point where I had nothing to do anymore, and that was also a bad decision I have done since there are points in Phantom Liberty where they tell you to wait and do other things before they proceed you on to the next mainline quest. They basically did that for the DLC, so you could have downtime to grind certain quests, or progress in general with its base game while progressing for Phantom Liberty. Just to really sync things up nicely in your playthrough, but the quest and base game and Phantom Liberty don't necessarily really reflect well on each other. The themes between these two things can ruin how you consume the story. I am a bit happy I decided to grind out a lot of the quests before really digging in deep into Phantom Liberty, but it did ruin the flow of gameplay for me since there were complete quiet times when progressing quest during the whole Dogtown experience. So, I recommend you just play it your own way. That's honestly the best advice I could give since the game was designed in mind of many players encountering their own ways of experiencing the game. You also may disagree on how I feel with the stories shown for base game and DLC. You may interpret them differently. If you already have played and complete Phantom Liberty, I would love to hear you out if you agree on what I've just discussed about. Let's still keep it spoiler free in the comment section though. Before we move on to the next topic, I do want to inform everyone that there is a new base game ending in order to get this ending, you would need to do certain things within Phantom Liberty, and yes, you would need to have the DLC purchase if you want this experience. So, 
I guess you could say that Phantom Liberty sort of takes over, overlaps the mainline story. Of course, depending on decisions you make, Phantom Liberty does have its own set of endings as well, just for the DLC itself. It's sort of hard to explain in a spoiler-free video, but I thought it's important to mention to new players. I forgot to mention that even Idris Elba's performance was fantastic, and he captures his complex character very well throughout the DLC. But that goes with the other characters, actors within Phantom Liberty, and I always found their performances superb. The only little hiccup I noticed with Male V's performance that he sounded different in the DLC, and not that his performance was off, it was not as relative to his base game performance. He has much of a serious, deeper tone in his voice in Phantom Liberty in some scenes, but not all. So it makes me question if that was purposely done, or if the actor was in a whole new studio or setup when he recorded his lines. It was weird to hear it at first for me since I was used to Male V's base game performance, but there was still inconsistency throughout Phantom Liberty with his lines since he did sound the same from base game and there were times where he just sounded completely different. Regardless, it wasn't enough to where I would feel off about it. It was just something I was curious about on why he sounded different at times. I know I just talked about how gameplay earlier is better than before, but I want to talk about how gameplay is within Phantom Liberty. It is very noticeable if you took a lot of time in the base game and transferred over to the DLC and experienced their quest. A lot of the quests seem very well thought out. There are not really many quests that are straight to the point, unlike base game quests. And it's not entirely a bad thing that some quests in the game are linear. It's just that content is so different to me, especially as someone who has played Cyberpunk a few times before 2.0 launch. I found the quest to be a bit challenging with how the level is designed and the complicated decision making is present there for their side stories. So there are things on the line, not just on the mainline quest, but even the side quests which really add up the immersion to your playthrough. They even added dynamic events in the game where you are able to get care packages at random areas within Dogtown and it is very rewarding to get. You have to go through a group of enemies, but it's fun overall to get more combat out of this game. And to receive better weapons attachments and such. You could also go through an enemy base. I'm not entirely sure if it's a dynamic event, but there were moments where I ended up going through a random enemy base to receive good loot at the end of their level. Also, not sure if this is purely a dynamic event as well, or it has a whole quest line, but there are little side gigs throughout Dogtown and Night City where you steal cars from enemy forces and deliver them at certain places. These can also be a bit challenging to go through since there are some sub-objectives such as delivering the car at a certain length of time or don't let the vehicle get damaged at all. I say this is a bit challenging since sometimes mobs of enemies will keep going for you until you reach your goal. This is where vehicle combat is a necessity compared to the base game where it's not even needed at all. I say these sort of things with the dynamic events weren't as needed to be in a DLC but it adds much more playability for the game, adding some sort of gameplay loop, which is something I appreciate because I always enjoy doing random things in a game or even wanting something to grind for. Another thing I noticed during my first playthrough in Phantom Liberty that the visuals just seem much better than its base game for some reason. That could be due to lighting and how it was placed in their new expansion since the base game was created years ago at this point, but it's also how character models seem much more detailed. During my 2.0 playthrough, I for sure noticed the character models look much better but there are still times just like at launch where it didn't look the greatest. So while progressing the 2.0 update, character models and even lighting were inconsistent from time to time while Phantom Liberty, I didn't really see much inconsistency. Rather, I saw more detail with its visuals throughout my time with it. I could just be completely wrong though, and it could just be some placebo effect since I was experiencing a whole new DLC content in Cyberpunk, so I would love to hear you out on this as well if you have the same thoughts as me. Overall, Cyberpunk 2077 feels like a completed game with its tweaks, balances, gameplay, and visual changes along with a DLC expansion that capitalizes on Cyberpunk's story. I believe if you haven't bothered playing this game, this is the best time to get into it. There is plenty of content to experience and has engaging story in this dark futuristic sci-fi world. Of course the game isn't the greatest on certain aspects throughout your first playthrough, but it's not as bad as it may seem like. I did expect Phantom Liberty to be as big compared to the Blood and Wine DLC expansion in The Witcher 3. For context, Blood and Wine was pretty much a Witcher 3.5, their DLC expansion felt like a whole brand new game for me, and I've spent about 40 to 50 hours in that DLC alone, while Phantom Liberty I spent about 20-30 hours in that DLC. It's not a horrible thing at all. The 20-30 hour mark was perfect to me, and for it just being a DLC expansion has even more hours in the world of Cyberpunk. It's just that Phantom Liberty is 
truly an expansion for the game while Blood and Wine gives that feeling of a new game. Each to their own because they are unique in different ways. I also admire how Cyberpunk is probably the only CDPR game where I genuinely feel that they got their gameplay mechanics right. The biggest issues I am having for the Witcher games is that their combat and gameplay mechanics could have been better and it can be stale throughout the playthrough since they hold back on abilities throughout the game. While Cyberpunk, you are able to have unique crazy builds that can do different things. Variety for sure takes the cake with Cyberpunk 2077. The only thing I'm very sad about is that this is pretty much CDPR's last big update and content to put out while this game is at its peak. I would love to see more of this game, especially how I was having a blast coming back to Cyberpunk. At the same time, I do understand that developers have to move on and apparently they are already in the works or planning the sequel for Cyberpunk 2077. All I can say is that I wish them the best in their development and I'm looking forward to what they will offer. If Phantom Liberty was a very solid DLC expansion that changes up the base game, I can only imagine what would happen for the sequel. I also want to say congratulations to the team that helped produce Cyberpunk to get back on its feet, and for a big game that had a lot of problems on launch, I expected it not to really be fixed. Somehow the studio managed, they went through all the odds and had a successful launch of Phantom Liberty which I applaud them for. Cyberpunk is definitely one of those games I'll remember over time. Remember to drop a like and subscribe if you haven't yet. I would love to hear you guys out in the comment section about this critique and just about your experience with Phantom Liberty if you already have played the game. Please keep it spoiler free. I keep saying that and let's just let's keep it civil. I would love to still hear you guys' uh, opinions about it. Uh, but I also hope you guys enjoyed this video. I still have other videos planned like a, a like the Spider-Man critique. I don't know how long that would take time to create or whenever that will be uploaded, but that's one of the future videos for this channel and I hope you guys look forward uh, to that. Um, but I enjoyed making this and I just enjoy making YouTube videos overall and any support to the channel is very much appreciated. So like I said, drop a like, subscribe, all that nice jazz for the channel, you could say. Uh, but thank you for, for those who have supported the channel these past few years. Just thank you so much. And I hope to see you guys in future videos. Have a good one. Have a good day. Have a good night. Wherever you're at, I'm out. Peace.